From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hello, listeners, and welcome to our Ropecast Christmas special. We have something very special indeed in store for you. I'm Peter Tischer, and I'm alone here today. Roger Charlton is not with me, but to make up for that, I have a few guests, and I want to talk to them about Christmas in their countries. They come from different English-speaking countries, and I would like to first welcome them. I have here with me Sonia Hetherington from the Republic of Ireland. She comes from Dublin and she works as a freelance English teacher for the Department of English at Saarland University. Hello, Sonia. Hello. And another lady is with me, Kamara Williams. I hope I got that correctly. Yep. <laughs> She's from Canada, from Winnipeg. Hi, Kamara. Hello. And then I have to my right Dr. Henry Rademacher. I think that's how you'd pronounce it in the U.S., right? Some people. Some people <laughs> would. <laughs> so Rademacher is actually a German name, isn't it? That's But true. You are from from the U.S. Where from exactly? Sacramento, California. Sacramento, California. So that's Hank for you, and representing Great Britain, uh, Paul Kingsbury. Hello. Hello, yes. Paul. Uh, he works at the. Language Center of Saarland University. I forgot to mention, Hank works for the Department of English, and Kamara is a graduate student of English mm -hmm. at that very same institute. Okay, so I hope you already are in Christmas spirits a little bit, but uh, are you all spending Christmas here in Germany, or are you going home? I'm not going home, but I'll be traveling with a friend okay. through Europe. I'm sure Hank will stay here. I'll be here, yeah. Okay. And I'll be here as well this You'll Christmas. Be here. Next Christmas we'll be in Ireland. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, uh-huh, Paul. Well, I'm here at Christmas, but going home straight afterwards. Ah, right. A, a so you'll or, all be spending so. Christmas yeah. mm. here. Mm. So you're not spending Christmas at home. Mm -mm. What do you miss that you'd usually have at home? Um, When you spend Christmas, mince pies. Yeah, Sonia. Mince pies. What are mince pies? Mince pies are little um, cakes made out of uh, dried fruit, and we eat them hot and with cream, and they're very tasty. Ah, sounds sounds good. Is that only Irish? Is that really specially? I don't think so. No, it's it's British too. Yes. In, in fact, I have some in my freezer <laughs> because I brought them back in November. Yeah. So, so you may want to invite Sonia yeah. for some mince pies. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'll be making them myself. Ah, good. Okay. These are Marks and Spencer's uh, mince pies. Ah, right. So she, she, you're, you're homemade, and he coming from Marks and Spencer's. Yeah. So, but you will not be missing them too much, I guess. Yeah. Is there something else that you'll be missing, Paul, from Christmas in Great Britain? Not specifically. No, I think you can recreate most things here in these days of technology. There's Uh -huh. Satellite television and everything. So, <laughs> so you you'll be watching British television yeah. programs. Yes, why uh, not for Christmas? Yeah. Uh huh. What the about Queen, the Queen's speech and so forth? Oh, the Queen does a speech on Christmas. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. On Christmas Day, the twenty fifth, um, at, at three o'clock. At three o'clock. Uh, yeah. Always at three o'clock. Yeah. And and what does she say? What kinds of things? Does oh, she, she gives the review of the year and what's happened and how she's felt and who she's seen and. What she's done. That sounds a little bit more political, less Christmassy. No, no, it's a, me a message for her subjects and uh -huh, uh -huh. around the Commonwealth. <laughs> okay, maybe we'll get that kind of stuff from Angela Merkel as well, but it'll mm. probably not be not the same. Well, Canada is part of the Commonwealth. Do you listen to that too? No, I, I wasn't familiar with that either. <laughs> <laughs> What would you miss? being so far away from Canadian Two things Christmas come Kamala. to mind. First of all, eggnog with rum. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. I think everybody understands egg and rum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, what's eggnog? With um, eggnog is almost, uh, well, it's a drink. It's yes. not warm, mm -hmm. um, but it's basically egg with milk. Um, I think there's cream in it and a couple other ingredients mm -hmm. and you can either just drink it straight like that or you can, the way I like it, with a little bit of rum or whiskey in it. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. And um, you can't have Christmas in Canada without eggnog. 
Right. And the other thing is my mom's Christmas dinner. I'm going to miss that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. For one thing, because it's mom's Christmas yeah. dinner. Yeah. But is, that, is there anything special that she makes? Um, well, in typical Christmas dinner, cr turkey mm -hmm. and ham, mashed potatoes, vegetables, that type of thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Hank. Yes. California. Yes. <laughs> you miss anything about Christmas in California? Oh, I can't point to... Surfing any. on Christmas Eve, I, I don't know. <laughs> I've never surfed. <laughs> um, I miss my mom's uh, Christmas cookies. She always makes Italian wafer cookies called Pizzelles. Um, uh -huh. I, don't, I think that's just something that she learned how to do herself, and I miss her dinner as well. And now that Kamara has mentioned eggnog, I miss a little bit of eggnog also. <laughs> That's a very Pan-American thing with nutmeg, also, uh, nutmeg, I believe, as well. Yeah. That's a and spice, nutmeg. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then your alcohol of choice. Yes. <laughs> very important. Yeah. <laughs> Hank, let's get away from alcohol. Okay. Um, <laughs> really sorry. We, we, we may have m uh, minors listening. <laughs> That's true. I would like to talk about something that strikes me as very American okay. about Christmas. As you know, maybe our listeners do not know, a lot of national parks, tourist places, amusement parks and the like have Christmas shops mm -hmm. where you can buy Christmas decoration, holiday gifts all year round, right? Does that mean Americans think about Christmas all the time because these are open all year round. I guess round. some of them do. <laughs> I, don't mi I don't miss those. That could be another one of your questions. <laughs> uh, yeah, but what do you uh, make of that? Isn't that kind of strange? Yeah, I think uh, well, I, I'd say. But I think it's very strange. I think it has to do with tourism in general, that many people are just spending their time walking around in their sandals with nothing to do. And if you give them a Christmas shop, uh -huh. they'll spend their money. Uh -huh. And people actually buy Christmas tree decoration in their summer vacation? They'll buy ornaments for the tree and whatever other knickknacks they have to purchase there. Uh-huh. That, that's interesting. Yeah. Please don't count me in that group. Yes, okay, I, I, I won't. But are, would that mean, you know, Americans think a great deal about Christmas? I'll, I'll give you a poll from yeah. Fox News, yeah. which is very interesting. It says in that poll, a survey, that 96% of the people in the United States celebrate, celebrate Christmas, okay? Okay. Now, interestingly enough, only 78% of all Americans are Christian. Mm -hmm. So that gives you about, I don't know, 20% of Americans who celebrate Christmas even though they are not Christian. Mm -hmm. Is that really, is, is it such a big thing? I, I, you know, I can't imagine a Muslim celebrating Christmas here. I think except for Thanksgiving, which is also generally considered the biggest holiday in the country, it's also a holiday mm -hmm. in that sense. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a day off for some people, hopefully a few more for others, and it's something that they celebrate regardless of religion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but but you think, would you think that non-Christians would put up trees and stuff? I've known people who have. I've known Jews who have Christmas trees. Uh huh. Yeah, uh -huh. it's part of the celebration for many of them, and so they do it. And do Christians do Hanukkah in exchange? <laughs> we had to learn it in school. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> uh, maybe for our listeners, Hanukkah is a Jewish celebration at the same around the same season. Now, there's one I know that there's that it's special in it's different in America as well when kids and grown-ups get their presents. Uh, when do they get presents? I think it depends on the family. We usually negotiated it with our parents. Uh -huh. Every single December we would say, so what do we want to do this year? And they would say, uh, they were totally open to anything. I recall we did it on Christmas Eve uh -huh. or on Christmas morning. It depended on the excitement level. Okay. Or if it was a, an electric train, then of course our parents urged us to wait until the morning so they could set it up during the evening. <laughs> right. <laughs> Paul, when do you traditionally give holiday gifts in Great Britain? Uh, for children, um, while the children are asleep between the 24th and 25th, uh -huh. then the presents are mysteriously and magically placed at the foot of their bed, for example, or in stockings if they're small presents. Right. And then the children wake up about 4 o'clock in the morning and um, jump around and make a lot of noise and uh, then the day starts. Okay. Yeah. Kramara, is that the same in Canada? Pretty much. Usually on Christmas Eve, we're allowed to open one present. One. And then we get a stocking in the morning from Santa. And right. then uh, 
in the evening when dinner with the whole family, then we open the rest of the presents. Oh, okay. That's just true, the adult presents. Uh, what do you tell children how the presents get there? Santa Claus. <laughs> and how would he get inside the house? Uh, well, generally, it's supposed to be the chimney. Okay. Uh, but in my house, we didn't have a, a chimney, okay. a fireplace, so it was the front door. Front door. <laughs> yeah. And we had Santa Claus coming through the window sometimes. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, you had Santa Claus coming through the window. Yeah. Doesn't Santa have a different name in, in Ireland? Um, I thought it had a special name. I, I don't really remember, but... Uh, no. I suppose in Irish he's called Fear Nanulik. Fier, yeah, that's the mm -hmm. one. That's a, could you say that again, Santa Claus? Fear Nanulik. Oh my God, we will put that on our website, how it's spelled. <laughs> Uh, speaking of Ireland, Ireland is one of the few English-speaking, well, countries, regions, depending on whichever political way you look at it, that has a lot of Catholics. Yeah. Does Christmas have a different role in a, well, for large part, Catholic-dominated English-speaking country, if you compare it to maybe Great Britain, which you probably will know? Uh, well, I'm not Catholic myself, okay. so I'm not sure whether I'm going to speak for everybody, but I suppose one of the traditional things is to go to Midnight Mass on Christmas Eve. Okay, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. It's kind of funny because a lot of people arrive drunk after being in the pub, and now we're back to alcohol again. <laughs> <laughs> Eggnog too, or different things? <laughs> um, I suppose no beer or whiskey or... Uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. I know in Germany this would be considered appalling to go to a bar on Christmas. Oh, in Ireland on Christmas Eve it's traditional that we meet up with friends and families and we go for a drink on Christmas Eve. Oh, you would actually Eve. On Christmas go Eve on 24th, yeah, which of course is not the main day for us. We'd probably, people at work would go to the pub at lunchtime and then never come back to work and uh, uh -huh. stay out uh, drinking until yeah. whatever time. And eventually but, arrive in church at midnight. Mm, yep. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Right. Uh, that, that's that's at least uh, strange for for a German. I I'm a German, and and I remember I I got into a lot of trouble with a girlfriend a long while back, that we went to a bar on an after in an afternoon, on the second I think second Christmas holiday we have in Germany here. Uh, she thought that was completely out of style, uh, or not, not you know, with the style of Christmas, that you had to spend time at home and bars are a no-no. They're mostly closed, by the way, anyway. Well, on, on Christmas Day and Boxing Day, the, sec the second day, certainly, mm -hmm. but yeah. Christmas Eve, of course, is not quite Christmas uh -huh. for us. That's the difference. The 24th is not it, really Christmas. It's still the pre-Christmas Yeah, it's still very much <laughs> preparations for Christmas, mm. last-minute Christmas shopping, getting mm. everything ready. And ah, okay. So shops. stores are open on the 24th? Yeah, they won't close until about 6 o'clock in the mm. evenings. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. That's one advantage for, mm. for, for panic shopping. Mm -hmm. Paul, you mentioned Boxing Day. What is Boxing Day? Boxing Day is the 26th of December. Uh -huh. um, otherwise known, I believe, as St. Stephen's Day in, in other countries. Okay. Um, and uh, in Britain, it's traditionally a day where people are supposed to go and either watch or, or take part in sport. So there, there's uh -huh. a full football program, for example. People go fox hunting, or did, before it was made illegal. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and also other activ outdoor activities, perhaps a walk or something, would also be pretty usual, going for a walk in the countryside. Try to walk off all that Christmas food. Yeah. Okay. Do you have that in Canada too, Boxing Day? Boxing Day, yeah. Uh, for us, though, it's traditionally a day of shopping. So people get up at about four in the morning and wait in line at stores because they give away TVs for $20 or something like that. Uh-huh. Sales all day long. And that does work because after Christmas, you may not have a lot of money <laughs> left. You'd be surprised <laughs> how many people are up at that time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what about the U.S. Hank? Do they have a Boxing Day? No, they don't. It's simply the 26th of December. It's simply... And what do you do on the 26th? Is it, you just go back to work? Well, this year it's on a Friday, which means it might be a day off for many people. It depends on whether they're state or federal workers. But there are probably millions of people, at least thousands, who will be working on that Friday, strangely enough. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And uh, 
So, and what do Americans do? Exchange their Christmas gifts, or do they have sales as well, or what do Americans on the, do? On the 26th? Yes. I assume it's just working off food, as Paul mentioned, or going out to the malls as well. Uh-huh, to uh-huh. waste their money. Yeah. It's, it's also the start of the, of the sales uh, yeah. in Britain very often, yeah, the 26th or 27th, yeah. But the big day for us was last week, Friday, which was the day after Thanksgiving, and that's a huge shopping day in the United States. And why is that? Because it's, Thanksgiving signifies the beginning of the Christmas shopping season, and so people get together with family, have their Thanksgiving meal, watch some NFL football, and on Friday it's time to go shop. Ah, uh, Okay. I have one last question, which is more spiritual, less commercial for you. Could you tell me your favorite Christmas carols? Kamara, I'll start with you. My favorite Christmas carol. Um, I like Deck the Halls. Uh huh. And I like uh, Away in a Manger. I didn't know that one. Could you I'm sing not a going bar? to sing. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure really there'll be an MP3 on the website. <laughs> yeah. um, you, can... you really don't want me to sing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, okay, we'll see. Sonia, what would you, your favorite, maybe Irish Christmas carol be? Um, I don't know any Irish Christmas carols, but Away in a Manger, mm-hmm. Good King Wenceslas would be another one that we would sing. Uh-huh. And, um, yeah. Santa Claus is coming to town. Ah, yes. <laughs> that's that's, but that's that. not a carol. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, Christmas song, anything, Paul? Um, well, like, yes, I'm, I quite like um, O Little Town of Bethlehem and God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen. That's also quite a fun uh, a song, yeah. Okay. And, yeah, yeah. And, and I, would, I would choose Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Okay. Do you all know that one? Could we just, for our listeners, sing sing one of them together? And you, you'll not hear the individual voice. Do you know the lyrics to one? I know the, at least the first couple of lines. Okay. You want to start and we'll join in? Hark the herald the angels sing Glory to the newborn king Okay, uh, you get the idea, folks. So this was our Christmas special. Thanks for listening, and Merry Christmas to you all. Thank Merry, you Christmas. Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Yes. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.